Hey everybody, it's Cliff from Enochian.today and I'm going to go over in this video how to actually go about making a perfected copy of the book of Libra Loga. But before I do that, I wanted to thank the commenter Jafar, who said that the construction of the book of Libra Loga really is one of devotion. And I thought that was a really good key word in terms of why you go about making this because beyond all the the magical effects and the and the 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 subtle body effects and the benefits it has to you is really you are going through this process of expressing and with your whole heart your mind and your soul this love that you have for the divine right and i have to say when i was making it it was very meditative i very much felt closer to the divine energies and so I really want to thank Jafar for putting that, and I do apologize if I'm not saying your name exactly correctly, but I do want to thank Jafar for that word, that keyword of devotion, because I thought it was, that was sometimes the words escape me. <laughs> I am human after all. And so when somebody else puts a, a word to something that I'm feeling or feels a little ineffable, I say, okay, that's, that's a good thing to have. So Okay, so how does one go about making this book? So there are a few things that you'll need to know as you get into it, because as as vast as the book is, and as many letters and, and as structured as it is, it still will surprise you sometimes, and things will happen that do not always make sense. So I'm going to start with the overall things that you'll need, and then get a little bit into the text itself and things that you'll have to watch out for as you're transliterating, as you're converting individual letters from Enochian, from English to Enochian letters. Okay, so obviously let's start with the basics. What do you need? You will need a ruler, and you will need this ruler to make grids. Grids just like you see here, and most of them will be 49 by 49 grids just like you saw, you see here, just a whole bunch of rows. You will need uh, virgin paper, so no pre-printed grids, unfortunately. You will actually have to print those out yourself uh, and make lines and so on and so forth. So each of these is done by hand, okay? You will also need to measure, so figure out exactly what the length will need to be. You'll need to do a lot of dividing by 7 or 49. So virgin paper and what kind of virgin paper? You'll need uh, 12 by 12 for the most part. Uh, with leaf one being the exception, you'll need uh, a, probably a good four feet by four feet paper. Uh, you will need a pen. You will need likely several pens, okay? And then you're gonna put all of that into a scrapbook. Uh, at least that's the way I did it. You may choose to do it differently, but if you'll notice here, having a scrapbook, the number one thing that that offers you is protection for the book itself. I mean, this is basically considered, you know, a holy-ish book or a holy book. I'll just go ahead and say that. Um, so for me, I didn't want to just have the paper left behind. I wanted something to help preserve it. So I went ahead and ordered a scrapbook with plastic sheets. You may need to order additional sheets. They're very inexpensive. Okay, so, and then, like I said, the paper. Um, you'll need silk, a sky blue kind of silk, like you see here, and you will need gold leaf. So the gold leaf is for the title of the book, which is Amzes Nagesis Harda. And I'm even wondering after I've made this if this was not supposed to be in the other direction, but at any rate. Um, but you can see here, I just chose to do it with gold leaf on paper and then glued or taped that uh, paper to the silk cover. So it is still technically, uh, it is on the title. Okay, so, or on the book, the front of the book itself. Don't be too proud to get white out and eraser. Okay, I did this, it's fine. You know, you're going to make mistakes. So that goes along with the idea of patience and humility. You're gonna make mistakes. You could, you're, even if you're a perfectionist, admit and acknowledge to yourself you're human, you're going to make mistakes. And then just look at this white out and eraser as a bit of a correction or a, a, an, an atonement almost, if you want to put it in a biblical term. But 
the fact that you're just going to you're going to cover up and going to try to to undo the mistakes that you make it's inevitable okay with with these many cells it's inevitable so patience humility and of course love and this is something that i can say when you're working with this it definitely unlocks another level of love within you okay so that's what you'll need but now here's some things to keep in mind as you're doing it so the first thing is you're looking at an old style of printing <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to say right off the bat is that some of the letters will look like other letters. So the letter C actually looks like this. We would probably say maybe that's a, that's a letter T or that's a letter R. But really, this, this, if you see it, is actually the letter C. A lot of times, too, John D., I think he did most of the titles, will make this thing that looks like a letter B, but actually it's just a letter V with a very long tail, and then he was somehow curving up where this line that goes up to the upper right instead he had that curve back and that's just a stylistic choice that unfortunately sometimes made it confusing when you're looking at it so um, when i was looking against other source documents they always labeled that as a v and that's when i understood okay that was a stylistic choice the letter r back in john d's day it actually looked a little bit more like a k so don't be surprised if you see something like that or, you know, something along the lines where they kind of are doing this, but then they're also adding this thing at the end. And really, this is the letter R. Other things that you'll see is, for example, the letter D, just a very wide squiggle instead of a straight up and down line, just made it a curve. Almost looks like the at symbol, but really that's the letter D. Other things to keep in mind is that the letter X sometimes will he'll add a very long tail or whoever the transcriber was added a long tail to that lower left leg. So just be aware of that. Sometimes too, I'll notice like the letter G, it would go like this or it would like it would a very, very long tail or, you know, almost like um, like that sometimes. So just be aware that you're going to have to make decisions. Again, patience, humility, love, and I would say also, you know, you'll need to decide. You know, um, deliberate, but decide. So those are some of the major ones, and I'll also, uh, but decide. I'll also mention the letter Z or Z, depending on where you're from. We would probably say something like this or something like this, but the overall shape you'll see, it's almost like a like somebody's making the number three and then just adding a tail or something like that. That's, on, that's the common way that they're doing that. Other things that you'll need to keep in mind are how to make decisions on capital letters. Enochian doesn't have a, an uppercase versus a lowercase. What I tended to do was make the letters a little bit bigger and I also tended to bold those in. Now, obviously, Enochian is written from right to left instead of left to right. So what you're going to do is you're going to see a grid that more or less looks like, uh, let me find a good example here. One second, I printed out about four of these. And of course, the one I want is on the bottom. So you'll see some kind of grid like this, right? And this is just a printout from the Fergoff website. I'll go ahead and keep that in the link. So you see a bunch of letters like this. So what you're going to do is for every letter over here, you're then going to place it in your grid over here. Second from the left here, you're going to put it, place it second from the right, and so on. So everything here will be a mirror image of the way it appears here, but you'll be doing it in Enochian letters. So I'm just going to repeat that because this will come up again later in just a few seconds. So for the, the leftmost thing in the top row here, the less leftmost cell, that letter is instead in your version going to be in the upper right. Same thing with this one, upper left, a second from the left, it's going to go second from the right when you're printing it in Enochian letters. I also printed out the titles and I also reversed these. So for example, this one is uh, Harrodan, H-A-R, etc. And then, you know, and but in this 
right to you know left to right version it's like this okay and that is the letter h so okay so obviously it's going to be good to work with a guide i will include my personalized copy of libra loga the excel version i will include that in the show notes as well show notes <laughs> in the video notes as well so okay so you're gonna go along you're let's say you do this you're gonna get into a nice rhythm i wanted to point out a couple of exceptions to the overall flow that you're just gonna you're just gonna have to deal with it when it comes up okay so one of these is leaf 9a let me find it here leaf 9a is known as pages gem that is its title and you'll notice that unlike all the rest of these leaf 9a has in the middle a bunch of numbers that are surrounded by a circle as well as some letters that form a second circumference. So the first circumference is a bunch of letters. Well, the actual circumference is, you know, a line of circumference. But within that, it's almost like you get concentric circles here. So the, this first one, it's just a repetition of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is reversed, obviously, from the way it appeared. So I made the decision to reverse the numbers as well just using that very systematic, you know, every time I see this over here, I'm going to put it over here, etc. And then within that circle of numbers, there's this circle of letters. And then within that, there's another circle-ish looking figure of numbers. And then finally, another, cir another circle or so or maybe a square, I suppose, of letters. And within that is the name of the Enochian Prince Bornogo four times, okay? So just be aware that this is one exception. And then as you keep going, you'll find another exception. Let me find it here, where, here we go. You'll find two squares with a bunch of capital letters. And this is a 21 by 21 square within the overall 49 by 49. And this is a 19 by 19 square within the same. And this one is called uh, B-A-C-A-P-L-A-F-F-O-S. And by the way, I added the exact same dots above the letters that John D did. And the same thing here, here we have uh, Ozimba Lone do uh excuse me lon doch okay l o n d o c h now one of the things i wanted to mention too is that you're going to have to deal with four people's handwritings so just be aware that it's going to be hard sometimes just do your best evaluate but like i said deliberate but decide now the next thing i wanted to point out is that around leaf uh, 25, yeah, 25B through 28B, you have rotations. Well, what do I mean by that? I mean, literally, it goes from straight up and down to a 45 degree rotation, right? Now, if you follow that same method that I mentioned, you know, just transposing where this is from this, you know, upper left to this upper right, consistently you won't go wrong but what it means when you have something like that for example i'll go ahead and pull up this harrodan example here this is what it looks like you know if you're actually trying to zoom to to see the way the letters are actually oriented it's going to look like this 45 degree angle so just zooming in here at the top letters you can see i have written out uh, a L D A C H A D N, and you can see right up here. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a the letter A. If I rotate that, L D A C, because of the C is funny. It looks like an R, but it's not. H A D N, and that H is kind of funky too. Big on there were big tails. Okay, let's just put it that way, and then so on and so forth. Now, if you are reversing that, then it would be like so in order for everything to be arranged aligned at the top like that 
Okay, so just bear that in mind, and you'll see what I mean after you're actually working with it, and you'll have decisions to make. Now, the next thing I wanted to speak about was leaf 49, and this is the one leaf that is not in the Sloan manuscripts, it's actually in the Cotton Appendix. And here, this was the one where Galva, the angel whose name means the end, said, do this in the correct or in the left to right order, okay? The trick though is that she gave us 112 letters rather than 105. So it falls on us to figure out how to make this because what she said is three, uh, she wanted five three by seven tables. And if you do the math, five times three times seven equals 105. So that means seven letters need to go away. So there are different ways to go about doing this. One of the solutions proposed by Aaron Leach is to scrap a big chunk of the word loga, right? That this isn't actually part of it. And with a question as to whether or not there's 112 or 113, it does fit, okay? I took a different view, which is that loga is part of it. Why would you why would you get rid of the, the phrase speech of God from the book who's actually titled Speech of God? It doesn't really make sense. Or the book of the speech of God, why would you get rid of that? So instead, what I did is I noticed I went through the actual text, and you're going to have to do this on your own as, a, as an exercise, but I noticed that certain letters uh, in that text were actually names of Enochian letters. So what do, I, what do I mean by that? Certain words, I should say, were names of Enochian letters. So every time I have a dot here, what, for example, this is E-R, what then was shown is D-O-N. So it turns out that D-O-N is the name for the Enochian letter R, <laughs> okay? So in that case, what I did is I went ahead and swapped out those letters for the actual letter named there, and I chose to just add a dot signifying that this is actually short for it. So all of the letters are contained if you know the code, and that is something that, of course, John D. would have appreciated. So, and this is the letter hour, so on and so forth. And you will notice if you do the math on that, then you get everything adding up to a nice clean reduction in seven letters. So nothing is actually missing, it's just hidden. And what I like about that is you actually have seven hidden letters, so there's a hidden holiness within that. And it's sort of, uh, I found that both aesthetically pleasing and it sort of made a lot of sense to me as I was making this. Oh, and by the way, this letter, this actually indicates that there's a double um, reduction. So you you would need the source text in order to find out what that is. So in other words, it, the what the V E H that was a reduction from I think it was V A N E H. So V A N makes the letter V, and then V E H is the letter V, which is basically C or K in English. Okay, so that's what this is. It's Van uh, that one winds up reducing it by four letters. And just so that the first and last, last shall be first, um, this leaf, leaf one, is actually, um, just like leaf 49, it is untitled. But you'll notice here that I have made grid lines and all of that, but within each cell is a word rather than a an actual letter, a single letter. Now, the exception is on the reverse of this. You can't see it, and I'll explain why in a second, but the, re the reverse has those uh, 49, um, 49 rows, and of those, 40 are just words, just as with leaf 1a, but the last rows are all letters. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention, so I'll just mention quickly here, is that you need to make a decision as to whether or not to reverse the direction of the punctuation, usually, or I think almost completely, for the comma, right? So a comma, obviously, it looks like this, if you're doing it well, but just because it would be, it didn't make sense to have the word go this way, and then the comma facing that way, because usually the, the comma opposes the direction, 
instead, you know, um, what I did is I said, okay, if it gets to this, instead of that, I'll just make the comma go in the other direction. And it's clean and it, it makes it easier to understand uh, as a native English speaker anyway. So that's what to consider there. Now, when it comes to leaf one, this is obviously with, with 49 words. Some of these are very large. So I wanted to mention something about D's uh, punctuation here. And this is a great example of it right here. So we have gem something pala bamda. Okay. I think that's... Uh, I want to say that's the letter N, but I'm not sure. This isn't the best copy because I'm printing off something else. Uh, the the Sloan 330 3188 is a better copy of this. Sometimes certain things got retranscribed, so just be aware. And all the links will be in the in the notes here. But notice what he's doing here. He's adding an underline and then this little U shape each time. Now, what does that mean? What it suggests to me is that in order to make this fit the 49 uh, word pattern, 49 word per row pattern, is that some of these longer words are act can actually be thought of as a hyphenated word. Right, so if I say a run of the mill, you know, and I could say, you know, car, basically, right? What I'm saying is it's not the best car, it's not the worst car, it's just kind of your average car. But this is actually just considered two words. We have a very long compound word in one run of the mill. It's made up of other words, but it's only two words. But in order to make it fit the scheme, let's say, you know, if I wanted to say, well, I need a five, you know, if I made a five by one grid here, one, two, three, four, I would need to say run of the mill car. And then it fits, right? So you'll see John D do this a lot. You can see him doing it here, and you can see him doing it here and here. And there is one row, I, can't, I don't remember which one it is, but you have to, this is why I say like, keep your eyes open, keep your mind engaged. It's meditative, but you also need to be aware and thinking and alert, is that there's going to be something, I forget which one it is and it's bothering me, but um, you know, you're gonna see something like this and the only way to make it fit is you're going to see a very long word like this, and you're going to need to make a decision, okay, I'm going to break this up more or less by syllables. And I chose, rather than to use this notation, I used to use just the regular hyphens. And that's the way it wound up getting, it was something that he had neglected to do this for, or what have you, and he just didn't ask in the moment. But if you pay attention to this pattern and splitting it up, it turns out that you can split up those same syllables and recognize, okay, this is probably another compound word. And that's, I'm going to, you're going to have to artificially split it up because this is missing. It's not the first row. It's not the second. It's just somewhere along the line. So mentally keep yourself engaged as you're looking through. You might want to review the entire row. So that is to say, if you want to do, you want to follow the 49 by 49 format. Now what John D actually did, at least when it came to this, is he, I, I believe, and I, I could be wrong about this, I believe he just requested that he could write this backwards without having to make a grid. But nowadays, it's really nice to have all, everything except that very last page be in a 49 by 49. So initially, when I was making this, I actually did just write it backwards and transliterate it that way. But I decided as I was getting close to the end, I said, no, I want to redo this in a grid-like format. So just be aware. Other times too, notice that I said hyphen, hyphenating across cells. Sometimes the word is so big, like this is a 10 letter word. 
there was no way I was going to fit it in the space I had. But you can, you know, I just chose to hyphenate it this way to indicate not that it's a compound word, but rather that it's too long to fit on one line to continue to the next line. And I the angels never told me there was a problem with that. Okay, so that was a lot, but really that's the long and short of it when it comes to making that. I did create my own electronic copy uh, of, the, of the book, all 49... Uh, leaves front and back, so there's there's a bunch of them. So I'll I'll post that in the that in the show notes. Other things to be keep in mind: some of the original source documents there are stains on there. There's some of the paper degraded, so the scans are available. And there's one in particular where the entire column is just chopped off. Now the version that I have online, I also have indicated or I've tried to indicate. It's been a long time since I posted it where there's some missing cells. So for example, some of these, uh, the very last pages, let's say 30 and on, there's only every other cell is used more or less. In that case, I was getting a sense just psychically, for lack of a better term, of what letters belonged in there. It wasn't complete, but it seemed like some more letters ought to be filled up in there and I could kind of see where it was. Is that going to be 100% accurate? Maybe not. I am human after all. And so it's possible that it's not great, but engaging my humanity as part of this process was really helpful. So that's about it. I know this is probably not as long as you would expect, but this is really for the practitioners who are going to go in, get their hands dirty, so to speak. Not dirty, but you know, callous, definitely. I noticed that the, the sensation in this fingertip this middle one is, which is using my grip. That's the one that tends to make contact most. The feeling still isn't completely back. So, and it's been a couple of years since, so it's probably not coming back completely. But I really felt like it was important to to just keep going and to sh to continue in the form uh, that JFR said of of dedication and of commitment to something that even though it's hard, I still really wanted to do it. So, and I, I didn't mind that I was going to lose some sensation, like, you know, whatever, you know, it's, I'll, I'll live. <laughs> okay, so that's it. That's all I have on this. I wasn't sure how long this would run, but I think I managed to keep it relatively short for something that is this complicated. So if you're going to do this, and if you run into any questions, let me know. I'll try my best to answer them. But really, the only thing that I've learned is that there were a lot of decisions that needed to, to be made, and there was deliberation and decision. Um, overall, how long would this take? It took me about a thousand hours, roughly, which if you divide into it a full 24 hours of a day, you literally get the 40 days that you were supposed to spend, that John D. and Edward Kelly were supposed to work on it. Now, could I have been more dedicated? Probably not, actually. I was working on this with every single spare moment that I had. Um, and it took me overall, over across all that time, it took me about seven months. So, and it was really, um, I was really pleased to get it done. And um, other, like I said, other people have made it. Uh, I've talked with at least a couple people who have done so, um, including Jafar. And it's, it's a beautiful, it's a very mystical and like I said kind of humbling process uh, by the way for what it's worth this these are only a certain number of pages and the actual one is supposed to be way larger the the heavenly version and it's just that the angels were given uh, permission to send down these tables um, but yeah it's pretty cool and it's cool to think okay well you know maybe during the next transmission maybe around the year 2074 there will be, you know, even more of this revealed. It's all pretty cool and exciting, and I really, I really have enjoyed working with it. So, once again, any questions, either reach out to me here or through my website, Enochian.today. And that's it. So, with much love to you, I will probably work on a video on the Book of Silvered Leaves next. Thanks so much. Bye.